Hey guys, in this video we attempt to show how you can create a custom collider mesh free draper cloth simulation. In this tutorial we are using a metahuman character as an example, although the same approach can be used for other character skeletal mesh. As we mentioned previously, metahuman's body and face meshes contain rather high number of polygons, so we recommend using LOD1 for the body and LOD3 for the face collider meshes. This will decrease the number of polygons and improve the cloth simulation performance while still matching the LOD0 surface well enough. However, in some cases, it might be useful to reduce the number of polygons in very specific areas that aren't crucial for the garment fitting such as the face, the hands, and the feet of your character mesh. Also, it might be helpful to simplify these areas to prevent the fabrics to get caught by the fingers, eyelashes, ears, and toes. So let's start with exporting the body and the face skeletal meshes with the LOD information. In this tutorial, we are going to use Autodesk Maya, but you may prefer using another 3D rigging and sculpting software. What we want to achieve is to modify the mesh but keep the original skinning intact. Let's start with importing the face mesh first. Since we decided to use LOD3 for the face mesh, we can delete all other LODs. We are going to disconnect the visibility dependence of our mesh from the group. Then we want to unparent our mesh from its LOD group. However, it will result in its 90 degrees rotation because of the main group. So for now we just parent our original mesh to the main group and delete the LOD group. After that, we unparent the skeleton, which won't rotate, and leave the original mesh with its group as is for now. Let's create a duplicate of the original mesh and rename it as LOD3B. Next. We select the transforms of our new mesh. Unlock them, and unparent our new mesh from its group. This time the mesh didn't rotate but the rotate x value is now set to minus 90. We are going to select freeze, rotate, and set the value to 0. Now we have our original mesh with its original skinning and a duplicate mesh without any skinning information. Let's hide the original mesh and the skeleton for now while we're going to modify our duplicate mesh. You might want to choose your own way how to modify your collider mesh based on your specific requirements. In this example, we are going to reduce the ears, eyes, mouth, and nose. First, we remove the ears. Before going further, we need to separate the mesh and delete all unneeded components and leave only the face mesh itself. Let's delete the eyelids, lips, and the nose. Now we call mesh, fill holes command. Then, we use the multi-cut tool to add some polygons where the cutout parts used to be. For the eye sockets, we can use the extrude tool.
After that, we use the smooth tool. Here we can see that some polygons are not connected properly. Let's use edit mesh, merge command. Let's add some bulges for the ears using sculpt tool. We can make the original mesh visible to see how much we want the new ears to stick out and use the smooth tool to smooth out the edges. We don't have to be precise because this is an invisible mesh and will only used for the cloth collisions. Once we're satisfied with our new collider mesh, we can go ahead and apply the skinning. We need to select the whole skeleton hierarchy and select our new collider mesh. Switch from modeling to rigging and open the bind skin option dialog. We need to select allow multiple bind poses option and click apply. Now we are going to copy the skin weights from the original mesh to our new collider mesh. Open the copy skin weights dialog and click apply. Let's check whether the skinning went well. Select a joint and tilt it a little. We see that both meshes are moving in sync, which means our skinning was successful. We can now delete the original mesh and export the new one with the original skeleton. Now it's time to face the truth and import our new collider mesh into Unreal Editor. In the FBX import dialog, we select the face archetype skeleton and make sure the import goes without any errors. Let's use a similar approach to reduce the body. This time, we keep LOD1 mesh. Remove the LOD visibility dependence. We can merge the mesh now. Duplicate the original mesh. Unlock the transforms and unparent the new mesh and the skeleton from the original group. Hiding the original mesh and the skeleton for now. Let's select the fingers that we want to remove. We can turn the symmetry on so the same faces will be selected on another hand. Now we can remove these fingers. Let's do the same with the toes. After that, we can use the extrude tool to extend the hands. Then, 
With the holes edges selected, we use merge to center command to close the holes. And using smooth and sculpt tools make the rest of the hands more collision friendly. Let's repeat the same for the feet. At the end, we want to adjust the feet size to be close to the original feet with the toes. Now is the time to repeat the skinning steps. Select the whole skeleton hierarchy and select our new collider mesh. Open the Bind Skin Option dialog, click Apply. Copy the skin weights from the original mesh to our new collider mesh. Testing how well we did the skinning. Select a joint and rotate a little. The new mesh is moving well so our skinning was successful. We can export the new collider mesh with the skeleton and import it into Unreal Editor. This time, we need to select MetaHuman Base Skeleton in the FBX Import dialog. Let's open the new reduced body mesh and apply an existing animation to see if everything is OK. Now we can use these new reduced meshes as a collider for the cloth simulation.